What is up scrub fam Pat here back with another video it is pre-release week which means it is time for another limited review today we'll be talking about the red and blue cards for set nine so i will tell you my picks on what i think the best cards are and hopefully that will help you guys get max value at your pre-release this weekend hopefully by getting the w before i get into the actual video though got to give a shout out to our sponsor here at 3xg alec pastrana bearded collectibles best shop owner on the planet we say it all the time and that's because alec is going to give you guys the best prices on your set nine sealed products I know I said last week that there was like two to three weeks left to go. Well, you probably want to get your pre-orders in this week because pre-orders, as far as I know, might be closing soon. So definitely do not wait any longer. Set 9 looks amazing, amazing, amazing. Uh, also, got to give a shout out to the homie, Dalen Mack, Tournament of Power, February 21st weekend in Las Vegas. going to be the most hype three-day tournament uh, imaginable. It's going to be awesome. I guess maybe only worlds might be better, but even then I'm not so sure. If you guys are on the fence, do not hesitate. It's going to be just awesome. If you can afford it, you should definitely, definitely go. I will link the descriptions to both Bearded and the Terminate Power Registration down in the description below. And lastly, if this is the first time you've watched me do any of these limited reviews, I grade cards on a scale of 1 to 10. 1 to 2 is basically unplayable. 3 to 4 is, you know, not so good, might be a niche sideboard card. A 5 to 6 is a playable card and will make up the bulk of your sealed slash draft deck. 7s and 8s are very good cards that you should try to pick up whenever possible or play whenever possible. 9s are basically almost broken cards that, you know, will win you the game if left unchecked. And 10s are cards that are so snapped that there isn't really an option when you play it, you basically automatically win. So... Let's jump right into the cards. We will talk about leaders first. Leader quality in the set is so high. There's less leaders in this set than the standard leader, uh, standard set, I should say. Uh, so when choosing a leader, usually you want to try to pick the leader that goes with the color. Usually in previous sets, you just pick the good leader and it could kind of coast from it from there. But uh, in this set, again, leader quality is really high except for a couple of them. Uh, and Frieza is no exception. He looks at top three every turn for a Frieza clan and puts it in your hand. Uh, his biggest downside actually is the front side. It doesn't actually draw real cards. It only draws Frieza clan cards. Luckily for us, there's something in the ballpark of 13 to 15 common slash uncommon Frieza clan cards. So you're going to have quite a lot of selection there. But there isn't that much self-awakening in the set. So I can see uh, more skilled and savvy players leaving you on the front, which is Frieza's biggest drawback. You need to find a way to awaken as quick as possible. His backside is borderline snapped. Critical is the best keyword, in my opinion. Uh, in limited, you guys hear me say it a lot. It's not once per turn either, so you can just give your entire board critical as long as you have a ton of energy to spend. Uh, Frieza has arguably the highest or amongst the highest ceilings out of every leader in the set. Uh, so he's definitely very, very, very strong. But again, that exploitable front side leaves him from being, in my opinion, the clear cut best leader. Still, I'm going to give Frieza an eight. His brother Cooler does not fare too much better, honestly. Uh, Mill, you can't mill somebody in uh, in limited. You can't deck out. And Cooler is based around a mill gimmick, so you lose that. Um, also, there isn't as many minus cards in this set compared to, say, Standard Constructor, where you have cards like, is that all you got? So not having access to that means that Cooler is basically a leader that is going to rely on super combos and some, you know, commons and uncommons to potentially get an extra draw every turn, uh, which, you know, extra draw is nice, but it's nowhere near as backbreaking as critical or some of the stuff that other leaders can give you. So for that reason, I'm going to give Cooler a 5. Moving on to the battle cards. Frieza No Introductions is a, you know, 2 cost 20k negate, which is excellent. You guys know how I feel about uh, negates and blockers if you've ever watched any of these series. I'm going to give Frieza an 8. He's just good by himself as just a common 20k to cost negate the activate main that you almost will never use unless you're you know lucky enough to get the super rare uh, will not come into play and it's just gravy icing on the cake. You should really just evaluate the card for being a two cost 20k negate. Next up is Clan Commander Frieza looks at top five. I like having the ability to search for Frieza clan cards. Uh, it's a little bit redundant with our leader, so it's not the best. That said. Two cost for a 15k stat line is at least playable and it does draw me a card. So for that reason, we give Frieza a six. Next up is Frieza Death's Embrace, arguably one of the best super rares in the entire set for you to open when it comes to playing in pre-release. One drop, 
that is a 4K that can trips and draws this card is already really good. What sets this card over the top is you can pay one to shrink either the leader or any battle card by 10K for the turn, and it's not once per turn, so you can basically dump a ton of energy into this, which allows for easy game pushes, uh, and more importantly, it keeps the board clear. Your opponent must spend premium removal, which there is some, but not like a ton of in this set, to get rid of this card. If this card is left unchecked, it will win the game single-handedly, and the fact that it is a one-cost red means this card is super splashable in almost everything. I'm going to give Frieza Death's Embrace a 9. I would consider almost saying it's a 10. It's you know just that strong. Again, if it wasn't for the fact that it was easily answered by you know the small amount of removal cards in the set, I would definitely give this card a 10. Next up is King Cold, Imminent Invasion, two cost. Blocker is already really good. It's not as good as it was in previous sets because I feel like the card quality overall in this game is getting much higher. That said, it does have a random chance to get us a random body on board that's three or less, which is really nice, but not great. The most important parts of this card are that it is a blocker and it is self-awakening for the Frieza deck, which is really, really nice. I'm gonna give Frieza or King Cold uh, a seven. Definitely, definitely pick this up if you are playing the Frieza deck though, for sure. Next up is Metacooler Metallic Genesis. Uh, so three cost 15K is an okay rate. However, the best part about this card is that every time it attacks, you get a two drop back every single time. There is quite a number of two drops uh, in this format uh, when it comes to playing uh, with the Frieza Clan deck. And we'll go over obviously more of those, but anytime you can get two bodies for three energy and both of them are relevant attackers is really good. Uh, if you're in Frieza, you definitely want to be playing as many of these guys as you open, uh, as long as you have, obviously, the two drop or less Frieza Clan guys. Uh, can't say much, though, for this Metacooler Core Titanic Glare. This is uh, probably uh, a lot worse. Four cost for a 20k with no really relevant effect. You're just paying four for a 20k vanilla is pretty meh. Honestly, again, card quality has gone up over the years, uh, so I'm going to give Metacooler Core Titanic Glare a four. Uh, again, there's just a lot of other stuff you could be playing, especially again, there's a Frieza Negate that has the same stat line that is two energy cheaper and blocks an attack. Next up is Chilled Pirate's Bounty, which arguably might be the best uncommon in the entire set. Two costs for a 15k with critical and your opponent can't attack it with cards. That means your opponent can't attack with battle cards. They can't attack into it with leader cards. This is a 15k crit that pressures for free every single turn. And then it has a side effect of uh, if it's ever removed from play, uh, you get to basically untap an energy. This card is a house. Um, and I can't really think of too many better cards in the common and uncommon slot that get rid of this. Uh, there is a common uh, you know, and a rare in every color that can get rid of this. But the odds of your opponent having it, there's maybe somewhere between one and three per deck, I would say, in the format, uh, makes this card really snapped. Honestly, uh, I'm going to give it a nine. This is probably the, the highest grade I think I've ever given an uncommon or a common in one of these videos. Chilled is just really snapped. He's just really, really, really hard to beat. And that'll be a running theme that you'll see throughout this, this video. Again, if you don't have the rare removal, this card is just going to be a nightmare for you to play against. It's probably going to just win the game for your opponent on its own. Next up is Sun Gohan, Swift Reinforcement. Can't go leader with this card. It is a one drop, 20K if you fulfill the requirement, which, spoiler alert, the invoker requirements are really, really hard to uh, you know get in this uh, set. So you're mostly just paying it for what it actually is without any of the free or cheap to play payoffs because the payoff cards are just super rares and higher, which is not realistic. So yeah, this is most likely going to be a four cost 20k that can't go face. If you do happen to get it even for a one cost 20k that can't go face, that's still not really that good at all. Um, this is one of the weakest, if not the weakest red card, I think, in the entire set. So then you've got on a three. Next up is Vegeta, Blast Barrage. Most of the time you play this card, it is just going to be a three cost 15k negate, which is decent. It's not great, right? Uh, but... You know, this little auto effect is kind of like irrelevant. It's like it can get rid of like Frieza's death and death's embrace. That's like that's the highest upside. So, uh, yeah, it, it, it's OK. Uh, it's not like the greatest negate, but it is still a negate nonetheless. Uh, so I'm going to give Vegeta a seven. I think the Frieza negate is a little bit better because, again, this permanent, it's not really ever going to happen. I feel like for the most part uh, until the later stages of the game. Next up is Tian Shin Han Spirit Vanisher. Three cost 10k is not the greatest stat line. And the activate main to put it into play is not really super great either. 
What makes this card worth playing though and why I'm going to give Tien a seven is because it gives minus 20K to something ignoring barrier. There are so many threats such as the chilled and the freezes death, death's embrace that we just talked about that need to be answered that Tien Shinhan is worth playing for that reason. He's a three cost removal for red decks and it is something that is definitely needed because this is a common removal spell. Uh, there's not too much removal at common in this set. It's all usually in the rare slot. So that's why I'm going to give Tiana 7. Next up is uh, Android 17. Spirit Vanisher, just like uh, here with Tien, he has the ability to be able to play for cheap. Most of the time you're going to play him for 3 for a 15. And if he KOs a battle card, you get a blue, red-blue multicolor extra card in your drop area or warp and add it to your hand. There's so few red-blue multicolor extra cards in the actual set that you can realistically open. That means most of the time you're playing 17 for a 3 uh, three cost for 15, which is just a whatever rate. That's why I'm going to give him a 5. Uh, if you do happen to open uh, the Death, Be Death Beam, Emperor's Death Beam, I believe is the card's name, um, his value goes up a lot more. Uh, he's probably like a 6 or a 7 in that case. So uh, definitely consider playing 17 if you open Death Beam. Otherwise, he's on the lower end of the spectrum and probably cottable. All right, so next up is Full Power Frost. For those of you guys who have seen my videos before, you guys know I always give 3 cost 30Ks and 8. And that is because it is very difficult to remove them from the board. And they almost always get through for actual damage because they're difficult to out-combo. And there's so few negates in Limited. Next up is Chaos Beam Frost, two cost for a 15k. Every turn you get to shrink something by 5k, which might be okay for dealing with smaller problematic things. It gets rid of Frieza, Death's Embrace, for example. Uh, and if it dies due to a skill, for some reason, you you get the three cost 30k, which is a nice bonus as well. I'm gonna give this a seven. It's one of the better two drops I think you could be playing for this deck. Next up is Frost Before the Storm. If you guys have ever played the draft box, you guys already know. Um, the Android 18 that you can pay two to draw one is really good. Obviously, this Frost doesn't do anything when you put it in play, but you usually want to play this on turn two. Play it for one, pay one, draw one. Um, and every turn it sits on the board, you accrue tons of advantage. Your opponent is going to have to end up using a skill to get rid of this card to stop you from just you know sinking one energy into it every turn and burying them in card advantage, which will net you this two drop Chaos Beam Frost, which is really sick combo. And you will eventually just out card advantage your opponent. Uh, this is a really, really, really good mana sink. Uh, so I'm going to give Frost Before the Storm an 8. Next up is Cease to Exist. Uh, three cost card with 5k battle power, or combo power, I should say, would do this activate battle. And then it has this really sick activate main, uh, which is you choose two of your opponent's battle cards and give them minus 25k, ignoring barrier. So this card is a blowout. Um... It answers most things in the format, and the things that it doesn't answer in the format, the larger successor targets or freezes, for example, it makes them, it shrinks them to a manageable size where you can actually attack them and get them off the board. Cease to Exist does pretty much everything you could want in an extra card, so for that reason, I'm going to give it a 9. It's really strong and arguably one of the strongest ones in this entire cycle. Next up is We Are Universe 7. Um, it basically tutors your deck for a universe seven that costs four or less. So it doesn't get the super rare Goku, which would be the ideal target for this kind of card, or it gets one back from the drop, which is nice. Uh, the best use I can see is picking back up the Vegeta negate. So that way you have a negate in hand, which would be pretty sweet. Um, that said, I think it's almost always better to just play more copies of universe seven cards. Uh, than to consider playing We Are Universe 7. So I would consider playing most of those cards first before I actually slotted this card. Um, it's not the best card, but it's also not the worst card. So for that reason, I'm going to give We Are Universe 7 a 6. It is one of the you know better playables. Next up is Thought I Was Finished. One cost uh, to give something minus 15k if your freezer or cooler is really nice. Um, this is common removal, and it's one of the big advantages to being Frieza. Uh, most of the commons and uncommons are 15Ks, and then there are problematic cards such as the Chill that we just talked about that you would love to get rid of. So yeah, this card is just, just all around solid, um, and I would play as many of them as you get in your deck. It's not really broken, um, and it falls off a lot later in the game, but it's still worthy of getting a 7 from me. And then next up is Your Mine. Uh, when your opponent plays a battle card, you get to shrink to your opponent's battle cards by 5K. Um... I'm not super in love with this. If your opponent wants to attack you, they're still going to get through. Like, I get it that it's supposed to be, like, you know, some kind of, like, pseudo-negate. 
With Cooler, it's the best, obviously, because you get to draw a card off of it. But I'm still not super in love with it. Most decks, I would give this card like a four. If you are dead set on playing Cooler for whatever reason, I'd probably give it somewhere closer to a six. All right, so next up, we have Android 17. Um, like I said before at the start of this video, the leader quality is really high in the set. Um, Android 17, like Frieza, is really, really, um, really good leader. Uh, on his front side, he has the ability to draw up to two cards a turn. He basically draws one naturally from attacking, and then you can cycle a Universe 7 card in your hand to draw one. So his front side is obviously a lot better than Frieza's because he doesn't get stalled out. Um, and can only, he can actually draw or see real cards rather than just only Frieza clan cards. The backside is actually really nuts on him as well. Uh, it's a little bit harder to pull off than Frieza, but he's just so overloaded. He draws a card when he attacks. You can pay two every turn to bounce a guy and basically draw a card from your drop area. And then the main reason to play him, if you have a critical mass of U7, like good U7s, not just like cards like Gohan for whatever reason, um, then it's worth pursuing Android 17 for this really sick activate main, which gives him 5k power, double strike, and critical for the duration of the turn. Um, he's really, really strong build around. I think he's stronger in draft than in sealed or pre-release. Um, but if you have all the pieces, you really can't go wrong with this leader. He's really strong. So I'm going to give Android 17 and 8. Next up is Frieza Unending Onslaught. This is a 3 cost with an activate battle where you can pay 1 and bounce a Frieza clan card that you have other than the another copy of this in your battle area to play it. And then when you play this card, you can choose one of your cards basically and discard it. Uh, and then you get a Frieza card back from your drop area. So... This card is really sweet in a lot of ways. Um, so it's really a one cost 15K attacker. You're basically trading in a card you've already attacked with. It lets you kind of storm off in a sense, like you swing with a two drop uh, and then you swing with your, uh, your leader. And then during your leader swing, you activate battle, play this card, pick up your old one, and then you get a card back from your drop, which hopefully will be another cheap attacker that you get to play. So this card basically is a combo card that enables a lot of extra attacks that you otherwise normally would not have. He's just an okay card, three for 15 is an okay rate, but he has some pretty sweet combos. Not the best combos, but he's still a really good card. So I'm gonna give Frieza Unending uh, Onslaught a seven. Next up is Combo Attack Cooler. This is very similar to the previous card that we just talked about. Uh, although this card, I think, punches a little bit better. It doesn't get a card back from your uh, drop area when you play it. Instead, it gets a red-blue multicolor card in your drop and combos with it. The beer super combo is at common, so you should open at least one or two of them. And obviously, if you decide to play the cooler cards to begin with, you probably have a decent chunk of red or blue cards uh, to support it. So having a, a basically a one-cost that is swinging for 25k every turn is really great rate and it lets you potentially reuse put and play effects or other additional effects on uh, battle cards such as say the two drop uh, frost that we talked about earlier you might be able to shrink something bounce it back play this cooler play the frost again and then shrink something so basically you get a little bit of removal there this card enables quite a lot and again it punches for way above its weight for what you're paying for it so i'm going to give cooler an eight Next up is King Cold Astral Tyrant. Can't deck out unlimited. That's a huge knock against this card. Twenty or six, uh, six cost for a twenty-five k dual attack is not exactly where I want to be. Um, most of the time, I want to pay somewhere between four and five for that. Um, so I'm not super, super uh, big on this card. It is still playable as a top end finisher, but it's not really anything to write home about. So that's why I'm gonna give King Cold a five. Speaking of things, though, that are worth writing home about is Chilled Intergalactic Marauder. It is a one-cost 4K. When it is removed from play due to a skill, you basically get to play a three-cost from your hand. So you get to cheat this guy into play if somebody kills it for whatever reason in the first couple of turns of the game. But the real selling point of this Chilled is that it's a finisher at the uncommon level. It is It gains for activate battle, pay three colorless. It gets 6K for each uh, energy you have and then triple strike so this is a very very potent game finisher uh at five energy four to five energy where you're usually trying to finish this game uh the game he's somewhere in the realm of 30 to 35k or a triple striker for three which is really really hard to block uh you know when you factor in your combo power you know limited blockers limited negates 
This card is just very, very good, um, and I think every blue deck would benefit from having as many of these in them as possible. I'm going to give this chilled a nine. There's just it's all upside here. There's no real downside. Again, three colorless to get triple strike, and a huge boost is great. Even you know, two color decks that can find a way to splash blue will want this chilled. Next up is UI Goku Battle Mastery. Uh, it is a two cost 15k when you play it you look at the top three cards of your deck and choose a multicolor extra card and put it in your hand Again spoiler alert. Those are all really high rarity cards You're not gonna have hardly any targets whatsoever for this this card uh, in your sealed pool and even in draft so You're almost always gonna miss on this So really what this card is a two cost 15 with when this card is carried or removed from your battle area you get a multicolor extra card from your drop area and add it to your hand That's what's most likely you're going to get out of it and again the standard pre-release pool is going to have anywhere between 0 to 2 uh, red-blue multicolor extra cards, so good luck with that. This is basically a 2 cost 15k vanilla, which is okay rate, so that's why we're going to give Goku a 5. Next up is Frieza Undying Emperor, 2 cost 15k is again, solid rate. It is a counterplay though, so you can use it to bounce back a 3 or less to your opponent's hand when you play it. Considering most of the commons and uncommons are 3 or less uh, in this format, this card is fantastic. So for that reason, I'm going to give this card an 8. It is a huge tempo swing and a sizable beater, so uh, definitely want to play as many of these as you can in blue. Next up is Krillin Battle Mastery. When you play it, you'll get top 7 for either a red blue multicolor extra card so that's not going to happen we are universe 7 which is as we previously discussed and just an okay card uh, and then turn uh, of power arena which is actually a busted card and makes krillin super worth playing uh, it's one of the higher end playables because it counts as a u7 uh, and it can potentially draw your card and the card it draws is good enough where skilled players can use it to basically just win the game outright through sheer uh, advantage and deck manipulation so i'm gonna give krillin a six Next up is Piccolo and Namekian Lineage. It's a 3 cost 15k blocker, and when it is KO'd, you get a multicolor extra card uh, from your drop area back to your hand. You're almost never going to trigger the permanent ability. It's just not going to happen. Uh, so 3 cost for a 15k blocker is it's, it's not really that great of a rate. And again, if you, get, if you have a red-blue multicolor extra card that you can actually get back with it, that's pretty sweet. For the most part, though, you are just going to kind of jam this just because it is a U7 to fulfill Android 17's requirements. That's not actually terrible. It can protect your life in a pinch, although it is really expensive. So I'm going to give Piccolo a 5. Master Roshi, 1 cost 10k vanilla. These cards are never good. Um, the best thing I can say about it is it has the Universe 7 tag. So it could be filler or energy for a uh, Android 17 deck. So I'm going to give this card a 4. It's a solid, but not you know the best turn one play and then after that you really should only be using this as filler for android 17 if you have no other better cards next up is 18 steadfast technique when you combo with this card if you can basically pitch an extra card to give it an extra 6k combo power so this gets to be an 11k combo if you discard an extra card um most of the extra cards you'd want to play anyway are utility. Its best use is to pitch uh, extra copies of Tournament of Power Arena for combo power. It is still a 2 cost 15k, which is pretty good rate. Uh, I'm going to give 18 a 6. She's not really the best, but at the same time, she makes cards that are dead in your hand actually usable. So that's uh, you know, a win in my book. <clears throat> So next up we have Majin Buu Innocent Trickster. So this is a two cost 15K. If your leader card is blue, place this, uh, this card in the center's drop air when your one of your opponent's cards attacks, negate the attack. So it is a built-in negate, which is worth something. Uh, and then if you have a red energy when it's removed from a battle area by a skill, you get to draw two cards. That second auto is almost never going to trigger because good players are never going to actually spend removal on the card. Uh, so for the most part, this is just a 2 cost 15k that doubles as a negate, which makes it pretty solid in my book. It's not the best negate, but it will save your life uh, at some point. Savvy players will basically just try to attack into this card to get off the board for a potential game ending play. So please, please, please be aware of that. Uh, I'm going to give Majin Buu a 7. Again, not the best negate, but it can potentially save your life, which is really good. Next up is Whis Tournament Spectator. One cost 5k is eh, but it does get you Tournament of Power Arena right to your hand, which is one of the best uh, blue extra cards in the entire set. <clears throat> Unfortunately, this card falls off really hard, 
Um, and it's not quite as good as Krillin later on in the game. So I would give Whis a, a six, maybe a five. He's good. He basically, his value drops after turn one. He's one of the best turn one plays you can make. And then after that, he kind of just falls flat. <clears throat> Next up is uh, Kale U6 Protector. Two cost 15k. Wow, like they really just <laughs> want to make sure that every two drop is a 15k in this, uh, this set apparently. So uh, it has this auto that'll never really trigger because as far as I know, there's no Khalifas and Kabas in this set. So for the most part, you're playing it for a two cost 15k, which is five out of 10 playable rate. Uh, and then it has once per turn, activate battle, pay one colorless to give it 5k in critical. Again, critical is really, really strong. Um, and your opponent having to block a 20k crit every turn is definitely worth it. It can even be used on defense to protect the, her from a leader swing without actually investing any real resources. I think Kale is a pretty solid common, and I would be happy to put her in most of my blue decks, so I'm going to give her a 7. Next up is Chaos Beam Volley. If you are a cooler or a Frieza leader, uh, and the battle card being playing is 3 or less, they just return to your opponent's hand instead, then they mill 2. The mill 2 is irrelevant. This is basically absolute release ball for 2 if you are Frieza and or cooler. Um... It's it's okay. There's like there's definitely better um, counterplay cards. Obviously, you really would like to have the two cost Frieza that I gave an eight to. Um, it's just better to have this same effect uh, with a body attached to it. Not having a body makes it you know a lot worse. But this is still a definitely a playable card, so I'm going to give it a six. Next up is Barrier of Hope. Uh, just like Cease to Exist, this card has combo power. Uh, you get to choose any of your opponent's battle cards, ignoring barrier, return it to their owner's hand, then draw two. The draw two is really nice, and again, this is premium removal. Uh, if you've already got board advantage or you're at parity, then this card is great. It's obviously worse when you are behind than Cease to Exist because it's not going to catch you up in a hurry. But this is definitely a card that you should be playing in all of your decks that you open. I'm going to give uh, Barrier of Hope a seven. Again, it's a lot. It's a step down, a pretty big step down from Cease to Exist, but it is still removal. And then finally, Tournament of Power Arena, Sensei's Divining Top. It's the best reason to play Android 17 as a leader, uh, along with having just a, a critical mass of cards that you can use to fulfill his leader skill. Being able to stack your draw every turn is really, really dumb. Um, for those of you guys who are patrons, uh, you guys probably remember from my Invoker article explaining why this card is really dumb. This is, again, Sensei's Divining Top. It's basically banned in almost every format in Magic, and this card is even better than it in some situations because it gets to put cards on the bottom of your deck, which means that skilled players will never dead draw once this card is in play. You will gladly play this on turn one. So that, that way your 2, 3, 4, and 5 are all bombs and the best cards in your deck. Um, there's, this card is just incredible and you really have to play with it to understand just how good it, this card is. I'm going to give Turn of Power Arena a 9. Uh, it's probably the best extra card in the set and that includes Constructed, honestly. It's just that good. It's it's insane. I can see foils for this card, uh, and really foils for this card just being worth so much money because it, it just does so much for Universe 7 decks. So that's it uh, for the red and blue cards. Again, if you like this video, please give me a like down below. If you really enjoyed this video and found it helpful and you're new here, definitely consider subscribing. Let me know what you guys want to see uh, as far as improvements for the you know this series. What Anything I can do better, that would obviously be helpful. Leave it down in the comments below. And we'll see you guys next time for the green and yellow cards. Okay, bye!